Uh, greetings once again to my fellow watch enthusiasts on YouTube and Facebook and wherever else uh, this video is being seen. It's me again, Celine Driver. Got another uh, Watches for Life video uh, today. Uh, this will be number four. And you might remember number three, the premise of number three was uh, looking at uh, watches that I would uh, take with me. Uh, part one was uh, my dive watches. You know, which of my dive watches, and there were certainly more dive watches that I had than I projected there, um, which one would I take with me? Which one would be the overall if I only had room to take one watch each of dive watch, evening wear watch, and uh, a general, uh, a generalized watch um, on vacation or on a trip or something, uh, which one would I take? Well, I covered the dive watch. Oh, and by the way, for the record, I managed to fix the uh, Dox's um, bezel. Uh, it was just stuck a little watch uh, oil uh, very little in the uh, groove and it uh, loosened up with a, a, a you know a forceful turn and now it's turning very nicely so today I'm going to look at evening wear watches you know watches you wear out to dinner watches that might pass for a formal evening although my formal watch collection is rather thin in fact you're pretty much looking at it with one exception um, I don't have a lot of watches that, uh, you know, are formal or evening wear since I don't do a lot of evening wear type stuff. Uh, but I do have a few and I want to go over them and, uh, I'm going to pick out the one that I would take on a trip with me and why. Uh, let's start from left to right. Uh, I have a couple of, uh, Filippo Loretti's. I have one of their uh, Venice automatics. It's uh, white with the silver bezel, with the uh, or silver case with the little gold coin edge uh, treatment. Uh, all the dials work, so don't don't be jealous. I know that some people are having problems with that little sun and moon uh, indicator, but mine's working. So knock on wood, uh, it will continue to work. I've never had a problem with any uh, Filippo Loretti watch I've owned, so uh, I must be, you know, blessed, I guess. Uh, I realize that this watch kind of uh, stretches a little bit on the idea of a uh, evening wear watch. I mean, uh, it would be better if it had a black um, band instead of brown, but I have extra bands. I could certainly change that easy enough. And, if pardon my reach, and grabbing my uh, caliper here, um, and seeing if I can do this without looking the fool. Being a 42 millimeter um, diameter, little big, I admit, but it does have that nice white face with the gold indices and um, the watches that are white faced as well that uh, classify as evening wear. So I thought I'd just throw this in there to round out the video. Um, yes, well, we'll deal with that. I also have this, uh, Filippo Loretti, uh, Rome in the emerald with the, uh, silver case. This one is, uh, obviously just a very simple watch and, uh, most dress watches are simple watches. Uh, no date, not even a date complication. Um, let's see, try and do this. Oops. Come on little smaller 39 millimeter um, and maybe even closer to 40 because I might be off a little bit but let's call it 40 um, so a little smaller a little thinner comparatively that's because this is an automatic this is quartz um, and it would be better in evening wear with a black band, I agree. Uh, and that's something that's, again, being decent with a spring bar tool, I could easily fix that. But just a beautiful watch. I've always loved this watch. I, I don't think, I, I am thinning out my um, 
watch collection by moving out my quartz watches. This one stays. Unless somebody offers me something really good, I'm keeping this one. I, I, I love green. And the, so that's another one of my quote unquote formals. Um, this is uh, my Orient Sun Moon uh, version three, as you can tell, uh, in rose gold with kind of a cream colored uh, face. And again, not the smallest watch I've ever owned at 42 millimeter. Uh, kind of, again, stretching the definition of dress watch because it is, after all, rather thick watch. Uh, and it's a rather large watch. But, you know, with, with the Roman numerals and the cream color, the rose gold, the black band, it, it does in my mind, um, fit on right, right, maybe not right on the edge, but, uh, you know, not, maybe not dead center, but maybe kind of out here on the target of a formal dress watch. Now the next two, next three, I should say, are more what a lot of people are thinking. Now, this is one of my vintage watches. This is an Ebulova Accutron Space View. Now, this one is very significant to me for a number of reasons. One, it's a, it's a somewhat rare watch in the fact that it is a 14 karat white gold. They didn't make a lot of 14 karat gold ones to begin with, and the white golds are even harder to find. I managed to find one from uh, a gentleman in um, normal Illinois named uh, Robert Piker. Robert Piker, um, sells, restores, and repairs Accutrons. And he's worked on every Accutron I've ever owned, and he b sold me this one. There, 14 karat gold. And this baby dates from 1961. This watch is older than me by several years one of the earliest Accutrons. Black band, um, nice buckle, very small. For the era it was correct, but for our era it's way off at 32, 32 millimeter, maybe 33, I might have goofed on that one, hang on. No, 32. So, very small by today's standards, but thin, relatively. I mean, the Accutron movement does take a lot of room. But it would make a good formal under-the-cuff wristwatch. And definitely a conversation starter. I also have an Accutron astronaut. A GMT astronaut. Uh, again, not an easy watch to come by. Uh, the Jubilee bracelet kind of makes it not as formal as maybe you would like. But, you know, with black face, with the, uh, with the uh, good size of um, 37 millimeter. Definitely fits under a cuff. I know I've worn it under a cuff before. Uh, makes, a, makes a pretty good dress style watch. Now this last one is technically not mine. This one uh, uh, my, I borrowed from my father. Again, he's got a watch collection that is uh, up in the nosebleed section. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a Frederic Constant, Constant, Swiss made, moon phase, 18 karat rose gold, sapphire front and rear um, crystals, onion style um, crown, a, a beautiful, simple indices, just, just a Gorgeous, gorgeous watch. Uh, it is obviously a good-sized watch. 
I want to be careful with this one. I don't want to scratch my this watch. Absolutely not. 42 millimeter. This is a dress watch. I mean, I don't think anyone in the world could argue that this isn't a dress watch. Uh, technically not mine, although my dad said I could borrow it anytime I want. I, I got to give it back to him. Um, just a beautiful piece. He doesn't wear it very much, obviously. It's in great shape. Um, has the uh, signed buckle. Um, onion crown, as I said. Beautiful, genuine leather. Um, band. Actually, sorry, crocodile. Or is it alligator? This one, this one is obviously a, a good size dollar formal watch. And if he'd loan it to me, uh, I would pick this one as the one I would take on a trip. Uh, but then again, I'd have to talk him into loaning it to me. I think I could. I, he, he doesn't mind it when I borrow his watches, but um, I don't know if he want me to take it out of state. But so, but I just wanted to throw this in as an example, a, a, in my mind, a beautiful near perfect example of a formal watch dress watch so this would be the one i'd pick absolutely if he'd let me but it's not in my collection technically so we're going to move it aside and we're going to look at what i got left and obviously what i got left not not a lot of choices obviously but uh i think some good choices um, but given what I have here, I think my pick for a watch I would take with me on a trip and I needed to have it for going out to dinner or to a, an, a, a, an evening party or something like that, um, that would fit under a long sleeve and not look out of place as a dress watch. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go with my beautiful Bolova Accutron. I mean, obviously between these two, there's a Grand Canyon sized size difference. But for for me, uh, being one of being a, a a a jewel of my collection, uh, a watch that I love dearly. It feels good on the wrist. It, it wears well. It's easy to see. Um, it fits under a long sleeve uh, shirt, cuff, easily enough. I didn't mean to rhyme there, but I think this one. This one just uh, looks the best, looks the part. And I would go with this one. So a Doxa for a diver. And a, Bulova, a 1961 Bulova Accutron Space View in 14 karat white gold for my dress watch. Now the next video will be um, Watches for Life number five. It will be part three of this little mini series and it will cover um, daily wear watches that are not dive watches. And what do you think I'll pick for that? Eh, we'll see. Anyway, um, if you like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up, um, two thumbs up if you want, uh, comments down there, uh, consider subscribing so you can see more videos and be alerted when they're, uh, when they're out. Don't forget to click on the little bell icon so you get a, an alert. And uh, I thank you for watching. Uh, if you think differently than I do or you have another brand uh, that I should look into, uh, leave that in the comments too and you know leave a link I'll go take a look so thank you have a good day and I'll see you in the next video